views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. Each week, you'll learn how to navigate the global shift of consciousness and explore the deeper knowledge within. Welcome home. Now here's your host. And you are listening to Lucid Planet Radio on Transformation Talk Radio and WBLQ 1230 AM, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and New York. Stay with us for the next hour and let us help you experience healing, inspiration, and knowledge. Every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on Lucid Planet Radio, we will have some of the most gifted scientists, healers, speakers, and authors helping you to discover the greatest version of yourself. You can find out more at thelucidplanet.com and listen to all of my show archives at lucidplanetradio.com. Today, we are going to talk about some topics in social psychology, which is kind of like my area as a psychologist, that hit very close to home for many of us, which is how to spot and how to deal with narcissists and control freaks in our lives. All of us have them. Some of us are aware of them. Some of us are not aware of them. And we're going to get down to it. Um, my co-host, Jimmy Ohm, is out sick today. I hope you feel better soon, baby. So I'm afraid you guys are stuck with me. Haha. <laughs> um, but before we begin today's show, I also really importantly wanted to give a massive shout out to our veterans today on Veterans Day, 11-11-15. Thank you so much for your service and for all you have done for our country. Um, so much love and respect to our veterans. And I also just wanted to remind our listeners out there that we have done some shows on Lucid Planet Radio with Brad Burge and Rick Doblin from MAPS, which is the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies. And they have had massive success using MDMA therapy to treat PTSD in our veterans. And for more on that, visit mdmaptsd.org and maps.org. I just want to throw that out there. Uh, this therapy can help a lot of veterans potentially, and it's really groundbreaking and interesting. So check out their website, maps.org, and also you can go on lucidplanetradio.com and listen to podcasts uh, with both of them about these therapies and you know what I'm talking about, basically. So that being said, um, thank you so much for joining us today, and let's talk about today's show. Um, really what it comes down to is that other people can be the best and the worst part of life, and the reality is we do not live on an island. We are forced to deal with people in many areas of life, and in other areas of life, we love dealing with people. Um, you know, when it comes to narcissists and control freaks, they really can be the worst part of life, and sometimes they're unavoidable. We have to deal with them. So what are narcissists and control freaks? How can you tell the difference? How can you deal with them? That's what we're going to talk about today. And if you have questions, you can please give me a call and get your question asked live on the air at 1-800-930-2819. Again, that live call-in number for today's show is 1-800-930-2819. All right, let's start by talking about narcissists. And the word narcissist gets thrown around a lot in popular culture. I mean, this is something that we hear all the time. And sometimes we use that word to describe somebody who hurts us, who we don't like. And other times we're describing somebody who is behaving narcissistically. And then other times we are talking about somebody who actually has narcissistic personality disorder. And now narcissistic personality disorder is different from somebody who might be acting narcissistically. Uh, they estimate, psychologists estimate about 6.2% of the U.S. population actually suffers from what psychologists would diagnose as narcissistic personality disorder. And that means they meet five or more of the following criteria. And I'm just going to read these out. And as I read these, think about people in your life that you know who might fit these criteria. So a narcissist has a grandiose sense of self-importance, exaggerating their abilities and their achievements. 
They have persistent fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, or love. Uh, they believe that he or she is special and unique and should only associate with other people who are special and unique. They would have a constant need for attention, affirmation, and praise. They would have a strong sense of entitlement and an expectation of special treatment. They can be exploitative of others, taking advantage of others for personal gain. They lack empathy and compassion for other people. They can often be envious or believe people are envious of them. And finally, they can regularly show kind of arrogant or haughty behaviors. Now, in order to qualify under the DSM-5, which is the Diagnostic Statistical Manual in Psychology, someone would have to meet at least five of these criteria. But there's a lot of other people out there, and we know this is true, that maybe they don't meet all of these criteria, or five of them, but maybe they meet one or two of them, or maybe they fluctuate and sometimes they meet these criteria and sometimes they don't. Um, so it's hard to know how many narcissists are out there, and it's also really hard to know what the causes of narcissism are, is. And in fact, it's in psychology, um, we don't really know what the cause of narcissism or narcissistic personality disorder is. Um, but we tend to favor what's called a biopsychosocial model of causation. And that's really this integration of biology, genetics, social environment, and psychological adjustment. In other words, our upbringing, our genes, our experiences, uh, our brain chemistry, all of these play a role. But again, it's it's hard to tell. And the reason that understanding narcissism is so important is because narcissism is actually on the rise, particularly amongst young people. And um, some research, research, some recent research coming out has shown that, you know, the population average is around 6% of the American population suffers from narcissistic personality disorder. That number is around 9 or 10% for people aged 20 to 29 years old. So what we're seeing is younger people more frequently being narcissistic. And we don't know exactly why, but there's some interesting correlational evidence coming out to suggest that the emphasis on social media is partly to blame because we are really emphasizing this picture we're creating of our identity, our sense of self, our, our self-esteem. And um, indeed, what they found in these studies, and you can see uh, all of this research on the lucidplanet.com. I have an article up about um, seven things you need to know about narcissists from a psychologist perspective. And I will also have an article up later this week about control freaks. So if you want to see all of this in text so you can share it with people, then that's great. You should do that. Um, so what, what they're finding is a direct positive correlation between narcissism and social media usage. So the more narcissistic you are, the heavier your social media use. Now, it's really important to note that I'm not saying that everybody who uses social media heavily is a narcissist. It's just that narcissists like to use social media heavily. They like the attention. They like the fact that they can kind of construct whatever reality they want that serves their ego. Um, but that doesn't mean that everyone who uses social media heavily is a narcissist. And I've definitely received almost like hate mail from people in the past for putting that out there because they're like, well, I love social media and I'm not a narcissist. And that's totally fine too. It's just that there's this correlation that's happening. Um, the other thing about narcissism is that it's very difficult to treat in psychology. So it's like this problem that's out there, but people who are narcissists usually don't believe there's anything wrong. They think they're great. They're amazing. They're better than everyone. They don't see why it's a problem or why anyone else should have a problem. Uh, and as a result, um, it can be really hard to get them into therapy and get them into treatment. So how can we tell if somebody is a narcissist? Um, Jimmy Ohm, who was our co-host for today, who's out sick, he came up with a very interesting strategy and it actually does work quite well. If you think that someone in your life might be a narcissist, ask them questions. Just ask them questions and see how they respond. Um, if they can't stop talking about themselves and how great they are, their inflated sense of achievement and accomplishments, how everyone's so jealous of them, um, and, and they don't let you talk, that's a good, that's a, definitely one of the first signs that they're behaving narcissistically. Um, a lot of narcissists are not good listeners, but they're great at talking and they can glaze over when other people are talking at them. The other thing again is, you know, do they involve you in grandiose schemes? Um, are they trying to kind of pull you into things and like they, they give you a bunch of BS and they suck you in and then it turns out to be lies and deception? That's definitely a sign that someone might be a narcissist. And again, that goes to that manipulativeness is 
often um, narcissists are manipulative and you know control freaks are manipulative too but they're different and we're to talk about about control freaks after the break um, the other thing of course is their social media presence if someone's always on social media they're always talking about themselves and how great they are um, of course that's not definite sign of narcissism on its own but it kind of can be when we're looking at all of these other traits happening too. So this is just think about, and I'm just putting this out there to our listeners. Do you have someone like this in your life? And how, how do they make you feel? You know, does it hurt you to be around them? Can you get away from this person? A lot of the time you can't. The narcissist or your family or your, or your close friends or your boss, and you kind of have to deal with them. And, We're going to talk more about how to deal with them after the break. Um, But before we do that, I just want to mention as well that narcissists can easily slip by undetected. They don't come across as ill or mentally ill or sick the way, say, someone with like schizophrenia or extreme bipolar does where you can kind of tell that there's something going on. And again, that's also not always true, but narcissists, they don't seem like the way you would typically define someone mentally ill. They just seem... It's like they love themselves a lot and they have this need of attention and this like lack of empathy. And so they might be fun when you first meet them, but then they'll kind of start sucking you into these grandiose plans and always talking about yourself. You know, after all, like having high self-esteem isn't so bad, right? But it's this high self-esteem paired with this like total lack of empathy for other people, totally believing they're better than everyone and really not caring who they hurt to get what they want in their path. Um, So that's kind of where I'm going to leave it for now. That's what you need to know about narcissists. When we get back, we're going to talk about how narcissists and control freaks differ and then how to deal with both types of people in your life. So this is the Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly. And uh, stay tuned and we'll be back after the break to talk about control freaks. See you then. Introducing the Lucid Planet, a digital gathering place featuring cutting-edge, high-vibrational content that will empower and inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. Visit the Lucid Planet today to stimulate your mind, body, and soul as you connect with a global community of like-minded people. The Lucid Planet is edited by renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly Neff, who is here to help you cope with anxiety, connect to your higher purpose, uncover your true passions, and live your dreams. Dr. Kelly's fresh, compassionate perspective emphasizes growth, transformation, healing, and thriving. Even in the face of adversity, say goodbye to bad news and low vibrational media for good and become part of the larger collective of people working together to navigate the global shift of consciousness and transform the world from within. Join the planet, the Lucid Planet. Visit thelucidplanet.com. Welcome home. Has asthma or allergies got you singing the raspy blues? Allergy and Asthma Networks is the nation's premier nonprofit patient centered network of doctors, caregivers, patients, and healthcare professionals who are dedicated to ending death and suffering due to asthma, allergies, and related conditions. Join President and CEO Tanya Winders each month on the Dr. Pat Show to learn more and visit allergyasthmanetwork.org today. Breathe better together with Allergy and Asthma Network. Are you ready for a game changer? Sarah Westall is bringing you Business Game Changers Radio. Sarah brings you leading experts, visionaries, and newsmakers who provide the best commentary on big issues and cutting-edge innovations. Sarah's 20 years as a business executive will help you think like an entrepreneur with expertise, energy, and attitude. Tune in to Business Game Changers Mondays at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. 
you like to be a question with anything that comes up in your body or mind? Would you like to become totally aware and begin to function as the conscious being you truly are? Join Access Certified Facilitator Glenna Rice every month for a live teleclass where you can ask all of your questions and learn to create change in any aspect of your life. Visit GlennaRice.com today to learn more and don't miss the next call. Join the questionable conversation today at GlennaRice.com. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. 1230 WBLQ. Any way you want it, it's the way you need it. Any way you want it. She loves to laugh, she loves to sing, she does everything. She loves to move, she loves to groove, she loves to love. We are back on Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly. If you have questions or need advice about dealing with control freaks and narcissists, please call into the show at 1-800-930-2819. That's 1-800-930-2819. You can also email me via the Transformation Talk Radio live stream, or you can tweet me at the Lucid Planet. Um, And before we get started talking about control freaks, I have a message here from Marion in Ball, Switzerland. Hi, Marion, who asks, is a narcissistic person the same as someone who suffers from narcissistic personality disorder or NPD? And is it possible to disconnect forever without leaving the country? (laughs) That is a great question. Um, Like we talked about, in order to be considered narcissistic personality disorder, you have to meet at least five of those diagnostic criteria that I mentioned. Um, But a narcissistic person is much more broad. It can just be somebody who occasionally exhibits those traits or some of those traits. So we don't really know exactly how many just narcissistic people are running around. People can have high levels of narcissism but not suffer from narcissistic personality disorder. I hope that helps. And again, it's kind of a linguistic thing. In psychology, we're always looking to categorize. And sometimes the categories help and sometimes they don't. Um, In terms of disconnecting forever without leaving the country, we're going to get to that soon when we talk about how to deal uh, with narcissists. Um, But yes, I think it's possible. So that's my short answer. So what I wanted to do now is talk about control freaks. And we all know someone who's a control freak. They give this unsolicited advice or criticism, and they just kind of want to manipulate and control situations. But narcissists might be control freaks. Not all control freaks are narcissists, if that makes sense. So how do we tell the difference between someone who's a control freak and a narcissist? Um, First of all, control freak isn't necessarily a psychiatric or psychological condition. Very extreme control freaks are generally categorized as having OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, But that's only in extreme cases. Some people are just very controlling. Um, Basically, the way that control freaks and narcissists differ, first of all, narcissists really recognize their narcissism, whereas control freaks often can see that they're being controlling or being perfectionist, and they sometimes want to change. Narcissists usually don't want to change their narcissism because they think they're great. And the second thing is, narcissists really feed off other people's approval, attention, and praise. They love getting the ego stroked. Whereas control freaks are more interested in making things happen than getting any strokes for making them happen. They just want things to go the way that they want. Narcissists may fake empathy, but they don't have any empathy, whereas control freaks can empathize. Sometimes this can actually help them grow out of the need to control. Um, Narcissists also pick people to feed their ego, and they kind of gravitate towards people who reinforce their narcissism. Control freaks usually tend to want to control all people in all situations the same. Um, Narcissists generally, and finally, and this is... um, from an article by Thomas J. Schumacher, PsyD, he says that narcissists need to control you, whereas control freaks just need a sense of control. So I hope that that helps to differentiate kind of how the two differ. We both have, all of us have both types in our lives. Um, so if you're unsure that someone is a control freak, these are generally seven signs that I've come up with that someone is a control freak. And this will all be out 
in print later this week on thelucidplanet.com. First of all, their life is out of control, but they're trying to control everybody else. So generally, control freaks have this way of projecting their lack of control onto the people around them. Often they can't get it together in the important areas of their life, like their job, their relationship, their health, but they are the first to try and dominate and dictate how other people live. Um, Second, control freaks try to dominate your plans. And you notice this the more time you spend with control freaks. And I've certainly seen it in large groups of people where there'll be like 10 of us going out to dinner or going out to a show. And the one control freak will literally try to enforce their will on everybody else that we need to get to dinner this way at this time and do this and do that. And it's it, even the control freak will even try to tell you what to order. Have you ever had someone do that? Where they tell you this is what you should order, this is what you shouldn't. I always go against them just because I, I hate being told what to do. <laughs> but it's ridiculous. Um, and this is the thing about control freaks is that they think they know what's best for you. And they will use all kinds of manipulation strategies to get you to do what they want you to do. Um, and I think many of us have grown up with a close family member or friend or person in our life who has used these manipulation strategies. And for a while, I actually thought this was just how people like behave because you see it so frequently. And then you kind of realize that actually, no, these are manipulation strategies. So uh, think about this. Have you ever had somebody who tried to micromanage your behavior to fit their expectations? How about somebody who used repetition by obsessively pointing out something that you need to change over and over again? under the guise that they are helping you. This is like a classic control freak. They say they're helping you um, and t- by telling you what to do, but really they just have this need for control, obsessive need for control. Um, control freaks will also sit in silent judgment as really a way of withholding, passive aggressively withholding their energy from you um, if you don't do what they want. They will also fear monger you by presenting you with like the worst case scenario to keep you away from some behaviors and directed towards others. Again, they give you this constructive criticism. And I, you can't see me, but I am doing air quotes right now. Constructive criticism. Um, really, again, it's just this thinly veiled way to elicit the behavior they want to see. They will also invalidate your emotions and tell you that you are wrong. And they will, this is a very classic one. I see this a lot. Um, They will use divide and conquer strategy, which basically means getting in between you and other people. And usually it's because the other people either don't want their controlling attitude, but they want you to still do what they want. Um, So they'll get in between you and your family, you and your relationships, all for this need of control. And um, those manipulation strategies can be really harmful and tough. The other thing that um, would identify someone as a control freak, and really think about this, do you know somebody who can't be spontaneous and fun because everything has to be planned out? Um, Control freaks hate not knowing. They hate ambiguity. They want to know everything. Where are we going? What are we doing? Blah, blah, blah. And so a fun way to tell if someone might be a control freak is like plan a trip and take them somewhere and tell them we're going on a surprise adventure. And if they're a control freak, they might just refuse or demand to know. Um, But, you know, caveat here, this alone is not enough reason to call them a control freak. They could just have social anxiety and, you know, not want to go certain places. So just that alone is not enough. But if they they have that and these other qualities, they might be a control freak. Um, Another thing about control freaks is that They're very opinionated, and their opinions are factually right in their mind. Not opinions, but fact. Um, And they can also, they really can alienate and push people away with this attitude because you can't get into a really, if you're going to debate a control freak, then, you know, it, it could just turn into a massive power struggle. You know, I've heard this phrase, and I'm sure many of our listeners here at Lucid Planet Radio have heard it too, Uh, famous, famous adage that you can be right or you can be happy. And I have literally heard multiple control freaks say to my face, no, I'm right and I get to be happy. (laughs) And unfortunately, that's just a recipe for disaster. Like you can't be right all the time. It's okay to be wrong and it's better to be happy. Um, But that's the kind of alienating attitude that we can get from control freaks. Um, the other thing is that they can be perfectionists. 
they will be the first to judge you and tell you you're doing it wrong, but they are also very hard on themselves and they judge themselves. And I think this is a really big area where narcissists and control freaks differ because narcissists will not judge themselves. They think they're fantastic. Control freaks are very hard on themselves. And, you know, they often take that attitude of like, if you want it done right, you have to do it yourself. And so they'll bite off way more they can chew. They'll try to do everything and not ask for help. And of course, this can really be a vicious cycle of failure because they end up letting people down because you can't do it all. And when they let people down, that leads to more self-judgment and more perfectionism, which then leads to them trying to do it all to make everything perfect. And, you know, again, creating this kind of like vicious cycle. So control freaks are also frequently workaholics, clean freaks, excess, obsessive dieters or obsessed with working out. Again, things where they can, you know, aim for that standard of perfectionism. And then finally, uh, as we go into the break, control freaks are often surrounded by other people's issues and other people's problems, but it's never their fault. And again, maybe this doesn't apply to control freaks. Maybe I could say this also applies to narcissists, but control freaks have a lot of problems with other people. And they always believe that if they could fix those problems in other people, that everyone would be happier. But if you're living your life and you're so surrounded by other people's drama and other people's problems. Maybe you're the one with the problem. You know, if, if everyone, if everyone's so messed up and everything's this and everything's drama, you need to look at yourself and recognize that you're choosing to see problems and you're choosing to make problems for yourself by internalizing those problems. And so this is the cycle of control and for control freaks, they complain a lot about all the problems. So if you see that happening to you, then that's also a good sign that someone is a control freak. And I hope that uh, I've been able to distinguish between the two. Both of these types of people are difficult to deal with. Um, I'd say there's more hope for the control freaks than for the narcissist. And um, <laughs> when we come back from the break, we're going to talk a little bit about how we deal and how we make peace with the narcissist and the control freaks. How do we liberate ourselves and free up our energy and free up our space? Because my goodness, this can be so draining. So I am Dr. Kelly and you are listening to Lucid Planet Radio and we will be right back. <laughs> Legend lives on from the Chippewa on down of the big lake they call Gitchagumi. The lake, it is said, never gives up her dead when the skies of November turn gloomy. With a load of iron ore, 26,000 tons more than the Edmund Fitzgerald weighed empty. Good ship and true was a bone to be chewed when the gales of November came early. Tune in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. The Lucid Planet. Welcome home. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for more information. If you're one of the millions of Americans suffering from anxiety, you probably know how powerless and out of control this emotion can make you feel. This is why it is so important to remember that anxiety is created by your mind, which means that you can learn to use your mind to uncreate it. Hello, my name is Dr. Friedman Schaub. My award-winning book, The Fear and Anxiety Solution, provides you with a step-by-step -step breakthrough process to understand and resolve the root causes of your anxiety and build a solid foundation of confidence and inner peace. If you are ready to take your power back, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com. That's thefearandanxietysolution.com. Or call 866-903-6463. That's 866-903-6463. Mind. 
Let the transition begin. Tune in to the hit show, Majestic Insights Radio, Success for Life's Transitions, with host Carrie Keith. Carrie is a gifted intuitive coach, healer, and teacher who will lead you through her empowering techniques of ancient wisdom and awareness so you can live your happiest, healthiest, and most vibrant life. Let Carrie teach you the tools of transformation that will help you experience success for all of life's transitions. To learn more about Carrie, visit www.majesticinsights.com. 1230 WBLQ. Hey, well, I'm a famous stranger in the black sedan. I want you to hop inside my car. We are back on Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly. Um, and now that we know what narcissists and control freaks are, and I'm sure you can identify somebody in your life like this, we are going to talk about how we deal with them. And you can call in if you have questions, 1-800-930-2819. You can write me emails on the transformationtalkradio.com live stream, or you can tweet me at thelucidplanet.com. And uh, I have some I have some interesting questions here. Anthony from Santa Fe asked me, "What should I do? I think I am a control freak." And you know, we've been talking this whole show about dealing or identifying in other people. What if you identify it in yourself? Um, that's a great question. And Anthony, I have a few tips that I would recommend, which is learn to be more vulnerable with people. Okay, and you don't have to alter your beliefs. Um, you don't have to try to change everyone. You need to really be realistic about what you expect from other people. Don't expect them to change. Don't expect them to be perfect. And know that if they change, it really doesn't matter for you. You only have control over yourself in this world and how you respond to other people. I mean, and we know, and this really applies to all situations and just life and being happy. And in general, you know, we can absorb the stress of the world into ourselves and we can try to change everyone and I'm all about changing the world but it starts with yourself it starts with finding peace with yourself and Lord knows I mean the people who know me know I struggle with this day in and day out as well someone does something and I want to react and I want to be upset but the reality is all I control is my reaction I can't change them and control freaks they want that control so badly but really that control starts with yourself and recognizing your boundaries and your limitations and that it's okay to have those limitations um also, another tip, if you feel like you are a control freak, is be direct. It's really important. Don't be passive aggressive. Be very direct with people. Um, and again, accept the unknown because we don't know, you know, we, none of us know for sure anything. And I can certainly say in my life, you know, I'm 33 years old. I'm a psychologist. Here I am on the radio chatting with you about stuff, but I don't know anything. I really don't. I mean, and the more that you learn, the more you realize how little you actually know. And that's okay. That's beautiful um, because that's how we grow. So just recognize that it's okay if you don't know where you're going. It's okay if you don't have control, that this is life. We're not supposed to have all the answers. So that's my advice to you, Anthony from Santa Fe. I hope it helps. Um, And now let's talk about (laughs) dealing with with narcissists. Um, earlier, Marion from Ball, Switzerland asked, is there a way to kind of break free of narcissists without just having to leave the country? And I'm saying yes. Um, and really the first step, and it's true for control freaks too, is setting boundaries. You know, narcissists are known as kind of like habitual line steppers, as Dave Chappelle famously called it 10 years ago in his Rick James <laughs> skit. Anyway, um, habitual line steppers, they will cross boundaries. A narcissist has never found a boundary that he or she has not crossed or wanted to cross. This is how they are. So the first step is setting those boundaries. And then when the narcissist crosses the boundary, you check them and you say, you cross this boundary and I am not okay with it. And that just lets them know that they're on notice, that you're not going to put up with it anymore. That gives you the space that you need. And space is really key here. You don't have to leave the country, but for narcissists, I believe that the best thing to do is to love them from afar. 
because most narcissists don't want to change and because most of them don't even believe that they really have a problem, they just think they're amazing. Um, sometimes, really, most of the time, loving them from afar is the best thing you can do. And what that means is not physical distance, but withdrawing your energy, cutting that energetic cord that ties you together, pull your energy away from them, you know, and that will probably most likely lead them to seek out energy somewhere else because narcissists cannot survive without lots of attention, lots of energy. I've, I've heard someone use the word love sponge before, and obviously that doesn't apply just to narcissists, but it's a great way to kind of their sponge or psychic sponge vamp. They will soak up all the energy that they can. So if you pull that energy away, instead of actively engaging in them, they're probably going to lose interest and, and find that energy somewhere else. Um, and, you know, loving from afar also means you kind of recognize how powerless you are to change them and that it's not your job to change them. And you can still hold space, though, for the fact that they may change in the future, but not kind of actively pursuing that change. Um, and we'll talk more about this later. But for those of us who are empaths or empathic or highly sensitive people, I know that I'm one. Many of our listeners are. Jimmy, our, our co-host who's not here, he's one. And what happens is... Um, we want to help people so much and narcissists can be like a very toxic black hole because you keep putting energy into narcissists. You want to help them. You keep trying and they just soak up the energy, but they have no intention of ever changing. And so it's really important just to like recognize that you are powerless to control other people. And again, this goes to what we we're just talking about as well about the control freaks. Um, the other thing about, you know, this is the other thing about narcissists. Um, we don't always have the luxury of loving them from afar, Right. Sometimes they're in our families. Sometimes they are our boss or other people at work. And, you know, we can't all just quit our job or like leave our family. We actually have to be there. And I know it sounds really counterintuitive, but forgiveness and compassion. It's clearly the narcissist, somebody who lacks empathy and who lacks that connection is really is so disconnected from the real world. Like that's sad. And, and whether or not they're conscious of it. I believe this is my personal belief, not psychology or science, but I personally believe that they're actually hurting inside on some spiritual level that they don't even know exists because they're lacking that like true connection. Like can a narcissist ever really experience true love? Like only with themselves. <laughs> and that's sad. That's sad to me. So kind of finding that forgiveness is I think incredibly important. And when you practice forgiveness, it's amazing how much it also kind of frees up your energy. If never I met you, I never. The doctor is in. Tune in to the hit show, The Psychic Love Doctor, with host Deborah Lee. Deborah's life affirming, highly perceptive reading method has taught Deborah how to zero in on specific problems with relationships, career pursuits, and current roadblocks to success and happiness. Join Deborah Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific and for a special broadcast the second Thursday of every month at 11 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. We Carry the Light with host Dr. Susan Allison is the show that inspires you to find the light within and shine your light in the world. You'll hear from guests who model how to be the highest, brightest, most evolved, fulfilled, and conscious humans possible. Tune in each Thursday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com and let Dr. Susan help you discover that you carry the unique light that only you can shine. Introducing the Lucid Planet, a digital gathering place featuring cutting-edge, high-vibrational content that will empower and inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. Visit the Lucid Planet today to stimulate your mind, body, and soul as you connect with a global community of like-minded people. The Lucid Planet is edited by renowned psychologist and author, Dr. Kelly Neff, who is here to help you cope with anxiety, connect to your higher purpose, uncover your true passions, and live your dreams. 
Dr. Kelly's fresh, compassionate perspective emphasizes growth, transformation, healing, and thriving. Even in the face of adversity, say goodbye to bad news and low vibrational media for good and become part of the larger collective of people working together to navigate the global shift of consciousness and transform the world from within. Join the planet, the Lucid Planet. Visit thelucidplanet.com. Welcome home. Artie Hoffman is the hottest psychic with the warmest heart and the host of the hit show Angels and Answers. A renowned psychic, medium, spiritual life coach, and an entertaining motivational speaker, Artie has helped over 15,000 people with his amazing intuitive gifts, his passion, and his humor. Call 877-ANGEL-02 to schedule a personal reading or to have your own psychic Artie party. That's 877-ANGEL-02. And visit ArtieHoffman.com and Angels and Answers on on Facebook. 1230 WBLQ. Welcome back to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly. Um, we lost connectivity earlier. It's very windy and stormy up here in the Colorado mountains, but we are back on the air to finish the show by talking about how to deal with narcissists and control freaks. Um, we were just finishing things off talking about narcissists when and, we went to the break. And before we get going, Dr. Pat Basili is on the line. Oh, wow. All right. Let's put her through. Dr. Pat, are you the there? Path? Hey, guys. One of my favorite Hi. topics, Dr. Kelly. Hello, Dr. Pat. How's it going? It's going, going, going. Hey, this is a very important conversation, and I'm so glad you're taking this on. I'm so glad you're talking about it. Um, and the reason that I am is that you and I both know that, you know, a number of years ago, not too many, a couple, they wanted to declassify narcissistic personality disorder because of the confusion between narcissistic personality disorder and, you know, and self-centeredness. What do you think about that? Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's like, where do it's really, I see it more as a continuum. Like you can be self-centered, but if you're self-centered and you have no empathy and you don't really care about anybody else and just want what you want for yourself, then you're a narcissist. But are you a narcissist if you're just self-centered? I don't know. Well, let's talk about it for a minute because I love what you're talking about on this show. And, you know, many of us, you, you know, know this really well. Why? Because maybe somewhere along the way, right, Dr. Kelly, we have bumped into a couple of folks along the way that were just a little bit different. You know, never yeah. could satisfy them along the way. But, you know, this is really a big conversation in our pop culture today, isn't it? Yeah, it's a huge thing. I mean, well, like we talked earlier about the statistics that narcissism is really on the rise among young people and that a big part of this is the way that we can kind of create these fake identities and fake worlds on social media. And, you know, it's definitely, it's, it's definitely a huge thing. And we don't do, I don't want to live in a society where the younger generations are becoming more and more narcissistic. Like I want to live in a society where people are becoming less narcissistic. How do we deal with that? You know? Yeah. I, I think I know. One of the things that I love is that, that, that somebody sent me a while ago, this narcissistic personality quiz. And I thought to myself, you know what? It, it, you can send a quiz like this. And what does it say? I am, uh, you know, it does it, you know, I don't know about the, you, Dr. Kelly, but I know that if I gave this quiz, truly gave it to a narcissist, they would be smart enough, manipulative enough not to answer these questions correctly. You see what I'm saying here? <laughs> yeah, it makes you wonder. <laughs> well, this is the problem in all of psychology. We're trying to operationalize constructs using survey methods and self-report. You know, I'm a sexologist. Men always over-report how much sex they have, and women under-report how much sex they have. <laughs> so it's like, how do we really know how many narcissists there are? The conservative estimate is 6.3% of the population. It could be so much higher. We just don't know. And, you know, so many, I get so many messages and hear from so many people about the narcissists in their lives and what they're dealing with that it makes me think there's probably a lot more 
narcissist than 6.3%. Yeah, I mean it's really a serious. It's a serious. It's a serious thing. I have a you know a friend of mine, uh, Melanie Tanya Evans, um, is somebody that didn't come out of the world of psychology, but she came out of the world of living with a narcissist, and and it you know it, truly being connected with somebody that's a narcissist. And Dr. Kelly, you and I know this. They are deadly. Yep. It's deadly. Yep. You know, there's never yep. going to be enough supply that you can give them. So when you sit down and you take these personality quizzes, I just want to say to those of you out there that do stuff like this, hey, the very fact that you are thinking about this, ask yourself this question, am I able to step away from my narcissistic partner long enough to have no contact? Isn't this this interesting dance between, you know, an NPD and a codependent? Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, narcissists and empaths really do have some of the most <laughs> toxic or codependent or abusive relationships where one person is constantly sacrificing to help the other grow mm -hmm. and the other one just literally walking all over them and never satisfied. And it's similar too with like uh, control freaks and people with low self-esteem because they're okay with being told that they're wrong and that they need to do this or they need to do that. And the control freak just walks all over them. And it, again, it can be really mm -hmm. abusive. And I just want to help people recognize when they're in these abusive relationships and help to step away and get some space. Um, the other big thing, Dr. Pat, is that empaths can really blend into the situation that they're in. So they will mirror the behavior around them. They're very sensitive. So someone who's an empath, as they get, as they get sucked into a toxic relationship with a narcissist, their personality will change. And when you get them away from that narcissist, they'll be very different. But when they're around them, wow. they start acting like a narcissist. That can be so destructive. Wow. So, like, if you feel like this applies to you out there, like, take a step back from your partner. Talk to your friends. See if your personality changes. Um, and kind of try to liberate yourself. Yeah. Isn't it interesting what you just said? And I so love that you're out there helping people, Dr. Kelly, around this, because the people that are in the middle of the relationship, what you just said right there is so important. This is such an important topic that I don't think we talk about it enough, because I love what you said. Step away and ask your friend. I don't think Dr. Kelly just said step away and ask people on social media. That, that is not what she <laughs> said right there. Just, to, just making sure oh, no. everybody gets that. Well, well, friends, you know, no. are, yeah, they're so good at making themselves look attractive on social media. So people who don't really know them will be like, oh, he or she is great. She's great post. She looks great. She does all these great things. And you're like, yeah, no, but that's not a real, that's not the whole picture. That's a tiny bit of the picture. Social media is really great at skewing reality. And narcissists love to be able to skew reality in their favor. Um, yeah, ask humans, ask actual humans who know you <laughs> for help. Those are your real friends. And if you don't have any real human friends, you need to go and find some. Start spending time in the real world away from the computer. Oh, yeah. One of the things that I love about this topic, and thank you for, you know, talking about it. Being, you know, I just, I was listening and I just had to call in because it is so important. And you talk about it so beautifully. You know, the thing that is really a dividing line for, for many people that have gone down this path is when they attempt to have no contact. And that's really, that's really the line that one has to draw in the sand. If you are really in a relationship with a Jeffrey Dahmer type, because that's what we're talking about. We're not just talking about being a little narcissistic. There's a big difference. You know, there's the person yep. that's never going to let you get away, Dr. Kelly. I mean, how many movies do we have out on this thing right here? Yeah. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so, so many Jennifer um, people Lopez being stopped and... by narcissists. Yep. It's just scary. Right. It, it, yeah. it really is scary, you know. Um, but thank you for, thanks, thanks for, you know, coming in there and reminding us, Dr. Pat, like this can be a really serious thing if you're in a relationship with a narcissist. I think we should do a whole show on this topic at some point. Because, I think you, know, you and I, we need to get together and we need to do, and I'll tell you what, we need to invite J-Lo because I got to tell you, what is it? Three out of the movies she's done has been in a movie with sociopath, psychopath, and a narcissist. We got to talk to her yeah. and see what's going on with her. 
I know. I I have Okay. Yeah. No, you're right. I I was flipping the channels and I saw a clip of that one, the most recent one, and I was just like, oh my god, it's a nightmare. (laughs) Um, You know, that's why as a teacher, I would never sleep with any of my students. (laughs) Good idea. Um, (laughs) Good idea. Hey, Dr. Kelly, I love your show. Thank you so much. Thanks for calling in. I love hearing from you, and let's do a show soon. Okay. I'd love to do that. All right. Have a good one, guys. Thank you so much, Dr. Pat. Dr. Pat Basili, everyone, um, who is, of course, my radio mentor and inspiration and literally one of the most talented people on the radio that I've ever had the pleasure of working with or even hearing on the radio. So she got me into this whole mess. (laughs) Um, So really, in conclusion, I just want to say um, really my tip of the week on this topic is, you know, you have 100% control over the energies you choose to let into your life and how you choose to respond to these energies. So, yes, you can set boundaries. You can walk away. And most importantly, if you have relationships with narcissists and control freaks, you need to go inside, go within, and figure out why you are making these agreements. What is it about you and your pattern and your conditioning that you're allowing these relationships to persist? I need to stop them from happening. But that's how we, we have to identify the pattern. If every woman in your life has been a control freak or every boyfriend has been a narcissist, it's time for you to recognize that you're doing this and you can stop it. So I'm all about empowerment here. Don't be a victim. Um, that being said, I want to thank everyone for tuning in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly today. I had such a great time. And you can join me every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Central, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, and 2 p.m. Pacific. You can find me on KKNW 1150 AM Seattle, and WBOQ 1230 AM, broadcasting from Rhode Island, Connecticut, and New York. You can find me as well at thelucidplanet.com and connect with me on Facebook and Twitter at The Lucid Planet with Dr. Kelly. Next week, Lucid Planet Radio is thrilled to welcome the quantum activist, Dr. Amit Goswami, uh, who is, of course, a quantum physicist and one of the, really a, a living legend. I am so thrilled to welcome him on the show next week to talk about his new book, Quantum Economics. So. Stay tuned, love and light, and I will see you next week. Take care. Bye. You've been listening to the hit show, Lucid Planet Radio, with renowned psychologist and author, Dr. Kelly Neff. Tune in each week as we illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. This hit show will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake up to the greatest version of yourself. Learn how to navigate the global shift of consciousness as you explore the deeper knowledge, passion, and purpose within. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for upcoming show topics and to contact Dr. Kelly.